like until 15, so I start. There's also there are other meetings planned in the morning. <laughs> Yes, of course, and, and and maybe we can take this time because um, there are a few people online just to have a small introduction on who is who. Um, maybe um, Michelle, you can you can coordinate that. Um, I see, for example, Ashley from. I know Ashley, you work with Gus for the Solomon Islands. Oh, sorry, for uh, FSM. Yes. Um, Micronesia. So yeah. I know that. Uh, yes, for Micronesia. So I know that you have been involved and you're working uh, and helping us with the reports. Maybe you can just introduce yourself very shortly and then we'll go to the next one. Sure. Um, my name is Ashley Meredith, and um, as she mentioned, I work with Gus at the National Archives for um, History and Cultural Preservation. Um, I'm their anthropologist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Um, and then I see uh, Eugenia Note Jordan. I'm sorry, I'm not really sure uh, with which country you work, but I would be very happy to if you can introduce yourself uh, briefly. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Hi. Hi, everyone. My name is Eugenia Note Jordan. I'm the uh, site manager for Bikini Atoll Nuclear Test Site. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, great, thank you so much, Eugenia. Uh, and then I see Helena Laupepa. Uh, Helena, can, can, uh, can you introduce yourself brief briefly? Good afternoon from uh, Julo Martel Islands. This is Emily and Helena from the Finance Department. So it's already 12.15 now in the Madrid. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. Um, and then I see uh, Sunny from Palau. Sunny, can you just- Hi, good morning, um, everyone. Yeah, um, the internet is a bit slow on my side, so I apologize for any delay. My name is Sunny Nirma. I'm with the Bureau of Cultural and Historical Preservation, and I'm the National Focal Point for World Heritage. Thank you. Thank you. And, and then I see we have a group from Samoa, but I'm not sure if it's from MESC or if it's from, um, uh, from MNRE. I, I saw that you had the video earlier, but... Hello? Yes, hello. Leka, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Okay. Uh, my name is Forrest Timme from the Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture. I am the Principal Culture Officer. And I have here with me uh, a colleague. She will uh, introduce uh, herself. Talofa mm -hmm. Leka, um, my name is um, Sharon Roma. We're also in the same division, culture division under the Ministry of uh, Education, Sports and Culture. Uh, I work as a principal uh, for museum. Thank you so much, uh, Forrest and, and uh, Sharon. Uh, let me see, I think I might have um, missed someone. Uh, Diane. Oh no, Diane is from the World Heritage Center, right? <laughs> So I think I think we have covered. Hi, ah, yes, I'm yes. with the Apa team. Yeah, so I think we have covered, unless there was somebody I I have not uh, identified in the list. I th I think oh. that was everyone who is connected at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so that brought us to 2.15, so or like uh, 15 minutes over there. So I think you can now start and we will yeah. expect people to join as we go. OK, good. Yeah, very good. OK, so Michelle, I start. Yes, perfect. Yeah, this is a uh, yeah. I think for your recording purposes. Yeah, good. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, uh, uh, over there in the Pacific, 
Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, this is Mr. Finjing, Chief of the Asia Pacific Unit of the World Heritage Center, speaking from UNESCO headquarters in Paris. So welcome to all and thank you for attending this special training uh, session organized by the World Heritage Center for the third cycle of periodical reporting exercise in the Asia and the Pacific. This session is dedicated to, for, to the Pacific states countries who are an important part of UNESCO's strategic priorities and have increasingly engaged uh, with the 1972 World Heritage Convention in recent years. And we also have a thematic program called World Heritage Program for Seeds. 2020 has been a difficult time for many of us, and many countries have been hit hard, especially in the Pacific, where natural hazards have affected the countries in addition to the global COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Ellen just mentioned that the cyclone is also, uh, I think, happening in the Pacific. So we have our sympathy for this. In the middle of this difficult time, the statutory window for reporting on the implementation of the World Heritage Convention has opened. And I'm particularly happy to see the increasing engagement from our national focal points and site managers in the Pacific. As you know, on the 1st of October this year, the World Heritage Center launched the third cycle of periodical reporting in the region of Asia and the Pacific. Asia Pacific is the third region after Arab and Africa regions to undertake this important reporting exercise, which is the statutory requirement under the World Heritage Convention. It is also the first time in the history of periodical reporting that all preparatory meetings for a region were held online only due to the global situation that we are facing now. I've been very happy to see that many of our stakeholders across the region have adopted the tools that we made available from the surf paced learning modules to the online Teams Exchange platform for national focal points. Together with our field offices, Category 2 centers, and the advisory bodies, the Asia Pacific unit of the World Health Center have provided coordination and assistance to the state party led exercise. And I'm very grateful for the active participation and the support of your national authorities. As you should now have received your access emails, defined your password, and uh, starting filling uh, out sections one and two of the questionnaire, either using the online platform or preparing your answers off offline. As you all know, periodical reporting is meant to be a state party driven process. In this spirit, we strongly encourage that you organize consultation with all stakeholders involved in world heritage at the national and local levels. Of course, with full consideration given to the current health situation. In other regions, this has proven to be very effective in ensuring engagement and the coordination throughout the reporting uh, phase. We wanted to use this session to raise awareness about the periodical reporting exercise, go over the key information about this important treaty obligation under the World Heritage Convention, and look at the timeline for the exercise. Most importantly, we wanted to open the floor to you as national focal points and site managers to ask any questions you may have about the exercise during the question answer session after our short presentations. I'm very happy to have some dear colleagues join us today, especially our colleagues from the UNESCO APIA office. 
Enel Leka and Melody uh, Aravalo, representatives from and also the representatives from the advisory bodies of the World Heritage Committee are also present today and will be available to answer questions at the end of the session. As in previous weeks, this orientation session will be recorded and the video and presentations will be shared with you after the session. For this sub-regional online meeting, we have invited both national focal points and site managers. But it, if some were unable to attend the session, we strongly encourage you to share the recording and the training materials with them. Finally, let me take this opportunity to express once again our thanks to the Republic of Korea, who support via their funds in trust arrangement with UNESCO, makes these training sessions and the close follow-up of the periodical reporting exercise at the region possible. Before I provide a quick overview of the exercise, I will pass the floor to my colleague Elena Leka, Leke, Program Specialist of for culture of the UNESCO API office, who will give an introduction to periodical reporting in the Pacific so far. So thank you, Ellen, you have the floor. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Feng. Uh, I think uh, the idea with, uh, with this session today is, um, is a dedicated session uh, to those working uh, on issues related to the World Heritage Convention and its implementation in the Pacific. Um, specifically for those that have been unable to follow uh, the training sessions that you have been hosting for the last, um, I think, uh, two months now because it started early October um because of the time zone difference so in in consultation with the world heritage um center um we discussed in ways uh, and and different mechanisms we can put in place in order to facilitate um and guide uh, both of the focal points and the site managers in uh completing the uh, third uh Sorry, the, th the third cycle of the periodic reporting uh, successfully. I will just turn on my, my video because I realize you're not seeing me. Um, and um, the, the idea of, of, of this session is therefore uh, an, a dedicated opportunity for those in the Pacific to also express their points of views in terms of the challenges they might have found. I know that some of you have been part of the previous uh, reporting uh, cycles. Um, so you might have uh, already uh, identified areas where you have some difficulties or areas where you would like to know more on how to resolve um, challenges or how to address uh, specific issues. Um, as, uh, as you know, as you're aware of, uh, we have shared already um, um, some selected uh, training materials from the previous sessions that have been ho held, specifically the one on uh, the first um, uh, part of the, of the report, uh, which is mainly uh, for the focal points to to work on and as well as the second um, part of the um, period, periodic reporting which is uh, more specifically on on sites um, I know that um, that uh, it's it's a, a quite a large or like a long and um, process where you will need to uh, identify and work together with other stakeholders in order to be able to complete the reporting. Um, I've had uh, several meetings with um, many of you already, uh, and I know that uh, you you find. Um, parts of the process quite uh, complicated. So I think today is a, is a very good opportunity to uh, demystify this uh, reporting process. And I'm just um, giving the floor back to, to those in Paris that have very generously dedicated their um, night or early morning. Uh, so um, in order to guide us and give us uh, the um, 
the support we need in, in uh, completing the reporting. So I'm, I'm uh, giving back the floor to you, Feng, and your team uh, so that you can start with, uh, with the sessions. Thank you. Over to you. Okay, thank you, Elena. Thank you. And uh, in fact, I think the this dedicated session was really thanks to the efforts made by UNESCO APIA. Uh, we also want to give, I call it a special treat to, to the National Focal Point of the Pacific. Uh, in fact, now it's one, almost 1.30 in Paris, and you can imagine it's a, it's also efforts. Uh, I thank all, all uh, my team members and also Valentino, who we, I think uh, those colleagues um, uh, try to provide uh, uh, necessary assistance. So I go quickly uh, through an uh, overview and introduction of the periodical reporting exercise. So the I think next slide. Yeah. Uh, what is the periodical reporting? I think it's a really it's one of the uh, monitoring mechanisms in the framework of the 1972 World Heritage Convention. And of course, it's a statutory requirement by Article 29 of the Convention. And the, 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 I think the, the nature of the exercise is a self-assessment by the state party on two parts, on the on one hand, and a, the application of the the convention at the national level, and also the the uh, implement. I think the state of conservation of the uh, of the uh, of the sites inscribed on the World Heritage List. So the overall aims and goals was to assess the implementation of the convention in each of the state parties, and then also determine the whether the OUV has been maintained at the property level. That means section two. And the, I think the overall goal also to encourage regional cooperation and the networking. I think this is also important. Through the exercise, uh, the site managers can come, of course. Uh, now we have the means of teams and also we can also get other uh, groups like the WhatsApp or I think uh, in any event, help to update information on the properties and the record changes that is real. And uh, this is uh, the the whole periodical reporting exercise being carried out on a region by region basis. So, uh, so far, the Asia Pacific and the third region, and of course, the, we want to get the aim to promote the cooperation in the region across Asia and the Pacific, and also response to the specific characteristics uh, of each region, like for instance, in the Pacific. So. We have most of the seas countries, and uh, and also it's a quite a vast in terms of geography. Next slide. Uh, I think for the third cycle of the periodical reporting exercise, we have some slide to uh, define the roles and the responsibilities. The national focal points, of course, we complete both section one uh, and section two. The section two. The tasks are mainly for the site managers, but the national focal points need to validate that. And once this has been done, of course, the national focal points should submit those questionnaire to the World Health Center. And then we have the site managers. The site managers, I think, also complete the section two of the questionnaire, in particularly on the state of conservation of the specific property. And they will submit the questionnaire for validation by the national focal points. Apart from this, we, the, we also have the World Heritage Center who coordinated the whole periodical reporting exercise. My colleague Valentino at the oversee all the, the running of the exercise, the questionnaire uh, for all the regions. And the regional team also provide assistance, materials, and the training help desk for the online questionnaire. I think all this has been uh, maintained by the World Health Center. And the, of course, the periodical reporting uh, exercise is becoming the increasingly uh, state party driven exercise. I think this is the, the nature of the third cycle of periodical reporting. So then the, I think the role of the World Heritage Center is to ensure a holistic approach across regions. 
So we have this uh, harmonized questionnaire for both, for both section one and section two, and also to provide the overall coordination vis-a-vis uh, -vis to, anal to uh, uh, analyze the, uh, the result or the outcome of the questionnaire and define a specific action plans. Of course, uh, the, to, uh, to ensure this coordination, we will develop uh, guide, guidance tools and analysis, and also to facilitate this state party driven approach for the exercise. Uh, next slide. So I think the, the periodical reporting, we, we can say that uh, uh, this, the reporting in all regions is being carried out by the, the national focal points to complete first the state level information on the application of the convention section one, and also reports on the state conservation of each world health property. This means section two. So I think completed. And then the submission of reports to the World Health Center and the regional reports are developed for review by the World Heritage Committee. The regional reports, I think uh, it's a synthesized report uh, to be examined by the World Heritage Committee together with some proposed action plans. And of course, this comes to the point of the regional action plans in the past, we have uh, two separate uh, regional ones, one for Asia and one for the Pacific. So, and then la lastly, the follow up action for the PRK reporting uh, exercise on the implementation uh, of the uh, action plans. Uh, next slide. I think the structure for the, the K data for the exercise we have, as this, uh, indicated earlier, we have the uh, section one on the application of the convention at the national level. So all the uh, different hidings on the questionnaire, I'm not going into detail. I think uh, you will be doing the exercise through this online questionnaire. Uh, and then section two is about the site level uh, state of conservation. Of course, there are also different chapters uh, as a component elements to to get the correct data on uh, the, I think, uh, from the different perspective angles. This is also important, I think. Uh, so uh, really the, uh, for all the questionnaire on section one and section two, uh, the respondents are strongly encouraged to gather the required data where ahead of the submission deadline. I think this implies that uh, the previous committee decisions, uh, the documentation available on the uh, World Health Center webpage, and also those archives and documentation available at your at the national level. Uh, yeah, then some areas covered by the exercise. So we have the state of conservation, and now for the questionnaire, we also are taking a sustainable development perspective. In particular, I think here the special mention is that the sustainable development policy adopted by the General Assembly of State Parties in November 2015. And through the exercise and also in the current questionnaire, we are encouraging, I think we are also testing the synergies uh, between different uh, conventions, the UNESCO conventions and programs, and also those biodiversity related conventions. So I think uh, also the, the relevance to governance, management, and also most importantly, capacity building, I think, component. I think these are the key areas to be covered by the exercise. The outcomes of the exercise, of course, at end, as I said, There'll be a regional synthesis report to be presented to the World Heritage Committee, which contain the information on the conservation of the of the properties in the region, the main challenges faced, and also trends related to the regional and global phenomena. I think this is going to be presented to the World Heritage Committee. And of course, uh, we're developing, uh, we're preparing the synthesis report 
the countries and also the, uh, all the uh, region will be mobilized to prepare the regional action plan. This will, this will set the regional priorities for, for the implementation of the convention and also translate the periodical reporting data into concrete goals and timeline. I think really uh, this, this is an important uh, exercise, uh, uh, I think, from the past experience. Next slide. So then I think uh, in the, for the second cycle of periodical reporting, we have developed a Pan-Asia Suvon Action Plan. I think with some 21 some regional or so uh, action points, this really ensured a proper and more uh, effective regional cooperation in different aspects. I think on the review and development of management plans, on the issue activities regarding disaster risk reduction, and also of course a better regional cooperation. And for the Pacific region in particular, we have a Pacific action plan uh, developed in 20, uh, 2009, and then revised and extended uh, up to cycle two in 2010 in Apia, Samoa, and also further uh, updated in 2015 in Fiji, in Su uh, Suwa in Fiji. Now it's, I think we are also at the, uh, almost at end of this uh, Pacific Action Plan. So now the current third cycle of periodical reporting is the right moment to update and also to, uh, to develop uh, the Pacific Action Plan on World Heritage. Next slide. The result of the previous um, cycles, the outcomes, I think uh, we have these in fact, three publications, number 12, number 34, and number uh, on the Pacific uh, uh, Island, and also number 35 on the uh, state of world, uh, world, state of world heritage uh, across Asia Pacific. Uh, I think uh, the, this is uh, really uh, some of the, I think, uh, the overview. And now the third cycle, uh, next slide. So the third cycle, I think, uh, yeah, some of the key data on the third cycle. Uh, key aspect, I think we, we will be getting information on section one from 44 state parties. And also regarding section two, we have, uh, we were collected the information through questionnaire on 264 culture, natural and mixed properties across the Asia Pacific region. So in total, we have uh, 308 questionnaires to be submitted uh, across the Asia Pacific uh, region. So I think this is a, a brief uh, sort of uh, introduction on the periodical reporting uh, exercise, exercise, the roles and the responsibilities, and also some key aspects relating to the third uh, cycle. So now I think uh, I give the floor to my colleague Anadol who will uh, cover the timeline on the third cycle of periodical reporting and also the overview on the capacity building resource and the activities. So now Anadol, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, let me continue sharing the presentation if everyone can see it. Um, so, oh, great, I have to reset. Give me just one second. It's my great joy with Teams every single time we do this. Okay, um, cycle three uh, has begun, as Fang mentioned, on the 1st of October of this year. Uh, and many of you have already looked at the questionnaires and started uh, looking either at the online version or uh, doing work ahead in the in the Word files of the questionnaire that we have shared with you, depending on access capacities and so on. Um, and the next uh, two steps are not official deadlines, but they, are, they have been meant as a way of engaging with all of you and of uh, 
ensuring that you have access to uh, the advice of the advisory bodies, of the center, of our field offices, of the category two centers on, uh, on World Heritage, who all work uh, together on uh, making the exercise go as smoothly as possible. So we have an early uh, submission deadline for each section of the questionnaire. Section one at the national level is at the end of January, and section two is at the end of March. And the whole point of these is not that the questionnaires need to be completed, that they need to be perfect, uh, that they need to be at 100%. What we would strongly encourage everyone to do is to get them as ready as possible at that point in time so that we can start us uh, as the content support team across the world start looking at the responses, see if there are any questions that may have been either misunderstood or if you have any questions to address these uh, ahead of time uh, and liaise with uh, with the state's parties, mainly with the national focal points, but also with the uh, that managers, especially uh, in the Pacific. We will always, of course, keep uh, national focal points in copy of all of the exchanges. Um, and this, this is a way for us of ensuring that the data that we collect through this exercise is actually usable so that we don't have too many outliers because some of the questions are formulated in, in ways that aren't necessarily always the most transparent or the easiest. Uh, and so it, it can be, it, there are possibilities for misunderstandings. Uh, and so to ensure that our data is as valid as possible and informs you when you do your action plans as well as possible about the state of World Heritage in the region, we make sure that your responses are as, as coherent as possible internally and otherwise. All of this with the, the goal of having uh, all the questionnaires handed in by the 31st of July of next year, which is the official final submission deadlines. By this point, this means that section ones have been uh, submitted to us for each state party and that for each World Heritage property, the site managers have finished filling out section two and that the national focal points have validated the section two questionnaire and submitted it to the World Heritage Center. Because the questionnaires are quite sizable, uh, we always advise that you start working on them as early as possible because it's basically impossible to do this at the last minute. Uh, so the earlier, the better uh, in for this exercise. Um, just a quick point, because it's easy to think that uh, our work is done when we are done reporting, but especially for national focal points, it's actually the midpoint, not the end. Um, after you are done reporting, all of the data is pulled uh, together, and the periodic reporting experts will propose a preliminary analysis of the questionnaire. They'll do this um, over a period of um, about nine months uh, from the 1st of August until they are finished with the final report. And there are several plans that involve you very actively in this. Uh, the preliminary outcomes of their analysis will be shared with you ahead with national focal points ahead of time. Uh, if all goes well and um, pandemics uh, subside or get managed a little bit, we hope that we can do in-person meetings as we have done so far for every cycle with all of the national focal points so that they can get together and create the action plans uh, with in cooperation with us, with the advisory bodies, with the category two centers, the field offices, uh, and we can all partake together in person in, in this process as crossed. Uh, and then these action plans that you create uh, will be reviewed for coherence and consistency with uh, all of our guiding documents and so on by the expert and the center for a couple of months. All of this goes into a document for the World Heritage Committee. Uh, and this gets submitted six weeks prior to the session of the committee. Uh, the committee will be the 46th session of the committee, uh, and we don't yet have, I believe, an official date or place yet, but the document will be ready and submitted and translated into French well, uh, six weeks prior to that. So we still have until um, summer of 2022 working on this exercise altogether. Uh, and I wanted, as we go through this, also to draw your attention to the tools and resources that we use for the exercise. We have put quite a few available, as Fang has already mentioned, on our website. Uh, this is in part 
an effort that had started uh, as part of the third cycle in general, but we have reinforced it in view of the current global situation. We had planned on meeting with all of the national focal points um, in person throughout 2020. Uh, unfortunately, all of these plans fell through for reasons that we all know. And so as a means of compensation, we are organizing uh, the, uh, notably this training, but also a, an entire series of other uh, online uh, resources. You will find on uh, on our website, whc.unesco.org, uh, on the periodic peer reporting pages, a number of different resources. There is a handbook for site managers that has been shared with you already last summer, and that is always available for download. On there, there's a series of introductory videos to the exercise. You have uh, a uh, frequently asked questions document, and you have a list of key terms used in the periodic reporting questionnaires. All of these are free downloads on our websites and have already been shared normally with all of you. Uh, so you should, you should have them and have easy access to them. But just a quick refresher that they are available in uh, English, French, and other languages. I know that the handbooks have been translated now in, in an in ever-increasing number of, of languages, which is very good. Um, there's also the periodic reporting curriculum, which is also available on our website, which takes you step by step through the questionnaire and provides explanations on a number of uh, some of the uh, trickier questions. Uh, and it's been developed as a capacity building tool, uh, and it draws on the many resources that are available uh, across the board and synthesizes them. Uh, and the online tool also has integrated with every question. There's a little guidance tab that gives you access to both the list of key terms and the, the guidance for the questionnaire, which has been uh, very, very heavily revised in between the two cycles to make it as easy as possible for you. And uh, what we're doing right now, which is our COVID-19 response, uh, is uh, a series of bi-weekly training sessions that have been organized in September uh, and will run until April of next year, where we have a look at specific topics that are uh, um, either individual chapters or transversal themes of the periodic reporting questionnaire that you have to fill out, both sections one and two. And we look as well at some, some very specific topics that linked with the implementation of the convention that are also at the core of many, many responses. But we'll, this is, as you might imagine, close to, uh, to the end of our reporting time. There will also be large Q&A sessions before each early submission deadline. The national focal points have also been invited to uh, join the Teams platform, Microsoft Teams, that has been uh, designed to distribute all the content, make sure that everyone has access to the PDFs, the, the, the Word versions of the questionnaires, the videos uh, of every single training session, along with the presentations that go with them. All of this is available on the Teams platform and is shared also via email with everyone as downloadable resources, um, so that depending on the quality, speed, and availability of access of an internet. If you are unable to join a session, you always have access to all of the content that was uh, proposed. And of course, we encourage the independent activities by everyone from our category to centers to our field offices. I know, I know Alan has been very proactive uh, in the Pacific about the exercise, uh, as have many of our other colleagues, and, and we are. Uh, 110% in favor uh, of this. Uh, and I believe with that, uh, I am I am done uh, with my little segment. Uh, and I get to hand over to Ellen, uh, who wanted to, I believe, say a few words about how the exercise has been uh, addressed specifically for the Pacific. Thank you. Thank you, Anatole. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to also welcome um, Samisi from Tonga, who is, I think, uh, the, uh, uh, one of the focal points that is leading in this exercise in terms of percentage of completion in of the report, as well as uh, Richard or, or Edson from Vanuatu. I'm not sure who is online. I, I can see Richard's name. Um, and I think uh, we will not be expecting more um, participants because the rest are uh, either involved in in terms of of the um, cyclone um, 
preparedness meetings that are happening now in, in Fiji, but I know that Veroniki has been very much involved in, in your sessions earlier. So in terms of the of the work that has been done in the Pacific, I think we are still in at early stages. I, um, what we have tried to do from the API office uh, together with my colleague Melody is just to coordinate and make sure that everyone has access to the platform. Um, and that means um, either connecting them with you at headquarters uh, in order to ensure that their credentials are um, resent uh, so that they have the codes and passwords needed for them to be able to um, access the platforms uh, and also shared uh, the different um, online material or the uh, recorded sessions from your trainings uh, so that specifically for the two sessions uh, uh, for the two segments of the reports uh, so that people can um, look into those and and try to get guidance in terms of what is required from them uh, for the reporting um i i i know that we have specific uh, soft deadlines and and harder deadlines that are coming up uh in in 2021 um but i i what i would like to stress is the importance of this exercise not only in terms of of you know uh, completing the reporting, but also in in regards to informing the coming um, regional action plan, which is very important. Um, we I've had recent meetings yesterday and um, a week ago with with the with the two ministries involved with the World Heritage Convention implementation in Samoa, uh, and I think um, we all agree that. Um, an uh, implementation uh, and, or an action plan is very much useful because it gives us uh, a roadmap in terms of how we can best implement the convention. Um, so I would not like to take up more of the time um, because I understand also that we are uh, very late for you in Paris, uh, but also that our colleagues here in the Pacific are, are in um, in busy times, in the middle of busy times, specifically now with uh, all the um, um, preparedness uh, that is happening um, in, in terms of the the ongoing cyclones. So I would just like to hand over the floor to you and maybe um, when the time comes to open up the floor, uh, I'm sure there are more specific questions. Uh, I would really like to hear uh, from from those that have started with the with the um, reports, um, their experience, their um, challenges they might have faced, uh, and perhaps even some suggestions on how they resolved uh, issues that they found to be more complex. So thank you and over to you. Thank you very much, Evan. Um, I absolutely agree one of the, the main purposes of us organizing this session was also to so that we can we can have exchanges. We, we try to keep our presentation as short as possible. Just one last small point. I'll hand over to Michelle Venn from the WHC APA team, um, who wanted to talk us through uh, the various uh, online connection modalities and social uh, platforms that are available for us to exchange with one another, given that we cannot do so in person. So, Misha, over to you. Yes, thank you very much, Anatole. Uh, so, uh, I, I will very briefly go over uh, all of the different ways and methods that you can access uh, us uh, at the World Heritage Center or uh, in general for the region. So uh, first I would like to begin uh, with sharing my screen here. Uh, and uh, we actually have a uh, Facebook group for World Heritage Site Managers. Uh, this is a network that is formed for the entire uh, world uh, periodic reporting exercise. Uh, this includes the Arab states, Africa, uh, Europe and North America, uh, Latin America and the Caribbean, and as well as Asia and the Pacific. All of these site managers uh, are on this platform and actively 
uh, discuss different subjects regarding uh, their their site management and other issues. Uh, this is an optional group, but we do think that it's uh, it, it, it would definitely help, especially since many of these site managers have either attended uh, online uh, attended sessions for specifically for World Heritage Site Management or have gone through the actual periodic reporting process. Um, if uh, this is of interest to uh, uh, the site managers, uh, we would have you email uh, wh periodic reporting at unesco.org. We will put this in the chat for you. If you send an email to us, we'll be able to connect you properly to uh, this uh, Facebook group and uh, you'll be connected. Now, the other uh, uh, platform that we also have accessible to the national focal points uh, is our Teams platform. And uh, if you, there we go. Uh, here, uh, in if, if you download the Teams application and have access uh, to the uh, World Heritage Periodic Reporting uh, Cycle 3 uh, additional platform. Here we have all of the videos uh, and presentations that have been uh, done over the past few months uh, with regards to periodic reporting. Uh, this is a platform for all of the national focal points to essentially chat and have a forum which to discuss if uh, they they so wish. Uh, finally, and uh, this platform you should all know by now, uh, is the actual reporting platform for uh, periodic reporting, uh, which you would find uh, at the following web address. Give me one moment. Uh, uh, here we go. Uh, this should be very familiar to most of you. If it isn't, we highly suggest that you go visit the, this website. Uh, which uh, if uh, we can check here, uh, it is uh, whc.unesco.org uh, slash en PR cycle three. And here you will be able to log in and access your questionnaire. Uh, if you do not have access to your questionnaire, uh, please also email uh, wh periodic reporting at UNESCO. Dot org. Uh, now, uh, before we uh, pass into the uh, question and answer session of this uh, online meeting, uh, I would like to point out that if you have any questions for this session, please uh, do so by uh, either one or of two methods. Either type in the chat your question, and the ch chat is here. Uh, Valentino Etouard, who is uh, the coordinator, coordinator for the uh, exercise across regions, has just put the email address where you can uh, send us any concerns that you have with regards to periodic reporting. This is where you can put your questions. The other method that we would suggest is there is a raise hand function uh, on the Teams platform. Uh, if you can see, if I raise my hand, uh, it will send a notification to everyone notifying that I have my hand raised so that we can then select you uh, for the next question. Uh, once you have posed your question, unmuted your mic, posed your question, you can then put your hand down uh, and then we continue as such. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, and I think uh, we will now uh, pass it back to Anatole uh, to begin the uh, question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michel. Um, yes, so this, this is the part where all of, of our guests get to participate actively as well, uh, and we are here to answer any questions that you may have about the exercise. Please don't hesitate. Um, whatever it is, uh, section one, section two, um, or the, the general framework, uh, we are we are here to answer your questions. Did we see anything in the chat by any chance? I haven't had an opportunity to look. Uh, there, there hasn't been any questions asked in the chat. 
uh, if 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 maybe what we could do as well is we can maybe go down the list of people who are currently in attendance and ask specifically if uh, you you have any questions if uh, that may be more suitable. Yes, Ellen had also launched the, the very good idea of uh, asking for testimonials essentially of people who have been actively participating and uh, and filling out their questionnaires. Uh, did you have anyone in mind, Ellen? I don't, I don't recall. Yes, I don't want to put him on the spot, but uh, I, I think Samoa has a question, but maybe then after Samoa, um, um, so after um, Forrest and um, and Sharon has their question asked. Uh, perhaps we can also ask Samisi because Samisi has been uh, working quite a lot on the reporting and maybe has some recommendations or suggestions for the rest of the group. Thank you. Over to you, Anatole. Thank you very much. Uh, I absolutely agree. Uh, Samoa, uh, we had, we had, I saw a hand raised. Do you have a question for us? You you may be muted, so so if if you can unmute your mic, that would be great. Thanks. Oh, yeah, can Hello? you hear us now? Yes, yes we yeah. can hear you. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation, for the informative presentation, and also the update on the progress of the uh, the activities that uh, the Pacific Island countries are responsible. But uh, definitely uh, from Samoa. Since we have uh, two ministries that are responsible for the World Heritage Convention, and that is the Ministry of uh, Natural Resources and Environment, which they are responsible for the uh, natural heritage. But the Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture that we 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 from, we responsible for the cultural heritage sites. So uh, my question uh, is regarding, is there a, a standard template for the periodic uh, reporting that we can have so we can see and, and uh, consider for reporting of the activities that we are responsible um, uh, uh, regarding the, the, the cultural heritage uh, particularly? That's my question. Thank you very much. Uh, if if you don't mind, I I, I will start uh, with uh, uh, the where where the information has been going. Uh, for, first of all, uh, that may help to answer some questions, and then uh, my colleagues can uh, jump in to uh, continue to to clarify. Um, so uh, first off, uh, m pretty much all of the information, including uh, the periodic reporting uh, questionnaire and and uh, a word template with all of the questions involved in the questionnaire, have been sent to the official uh, focal points uh, for the exercise. Now, in in this case, I believe that uh, both. Uh, and and it, I believe that there there hasn't been an official uh, decision on who would be replacing uh, these individuals, but currently we have on our list uh, Mr. Bismarck Crowley as well as um, Miss uh, uh, Tui Olo uh, Schuster. Tui Olo uh, Schuster. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, my understanding is that Bismarck Crowley is no longer in uh, the position of national focal point for the exercise. Yes. Um, but uh, both both national focal points have received uh, in this information. We can, of course, resend uh, the information required. Uh, but in many cases, for for many countries as well, the one national focal point usually coordinates with the different ministries as necessary, uh, according to what uh, the question demands. Uh, so I think it's best if we work with MNRE to compile these questionnaires because we have different. Uh, uh, functions, uh, functions and roles specifically for natural and cultural. Uh, so I think uh, that is a way forward for for Samoa's uh, reporting is to work together to put the, the 
the, the report together and then submit to you uh, uh, afterwards, if, if that's okay. Uh, Forrest, if I may, uh, sorry, Michelle, if I may. Um, so Forrest, I think uh, the best way forward in the case of Samoa, um, as you have this uh, collaboration between the two ministries that are overseeing the convention, but that the reporting lies in the res like it's, it lies with the Ministry of uh, National Resources. Uh, I think the best way is I will share with you the um, offline um, document, the word document for the report, so you can have a look, and then uh, we will try to set up a meeting together with MNRE so that it's coordinated and that the work also. Uh, advances because I think at the moment uh, Samoa has not really um, uh, advanced with, with the report so far. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, that um, is noted. I also have another question, uh, Lika, and also the team um, sticking to what um, Mr. Forrest has uh, alluded to. Because at the moment, uh, for information of um, from our side, there are changes to our uh, management level. At the moment, we are uh, awaiting of our new um, manager to come uh, to come on board, and it's also um, we are also trying ourselves to understand and to um, you know what has been done so far, and we are also sorry because this is our first time attending uh, a meeting regarding the periodic uh, reporting process. So what we want to try, what we want to um, understand here is how can we assist in this time in um, and on what information that we can uh, uh, support since um, MNRE is the focal point um, from Samoa. So those are some of the things that we want to. Um, uh, reflect and also uh, trying to uh, put it from on the report so that we can reflect our work. But as you said, Leka, this is something that we also need to work together with MNRE in terms of um, reporting, especially um, now it's the time to start moving and like, you know, start trying to have everything um, compiled together in order for us to comply with the dates that you have already given in the presentation. So yeah, that's from our side. Yes, thank you, Sharon. And I, I would like to also like show my gratitude today for to mask the max mask uh, group because both sharon and forest are not neither focal points nor um site managers but they have joined just uh, as um you know participants to to gain from this experience and and increase uh, their understanding of the reporting process uh, so thank you very much for joining i think what we will do we will bilaterally coordinate um a meeting together with mnre uh, so that um, the the work uh, on the reporting for Samoa is is um, um, shared and um, and that both par uh, both ministries uh, contribute to to the process. I am sure that uh, MNRE will definitely um, be very happy with your support in this process. Mm. Okay. okay. Thank you, Leka. Just as a quick additional point as well, um, which is an excellent point that, that Ellen had made, I think because in any country there can be many different line ministries that are involved in, in World Heritage and in different aspects of the questionnaire and the reporting, we strongly, strongly, strongly encourage internal coordination and um, we will make sure to recirculate with uh, the resources that we sent to all of you after this meeting sometime tomorrow. Um, we'll be sure to include as well again the uh, Word version of the questionnaire uh, so that you can have an offline look and maybe, you know, outsource some of the questions that fall under one specific ministry, whether that's not the, the focal point here at the reporting, but where the answers can only be provided by them and gather all of these uh, in, in offline before you then copy paste them as national focal points. And I'm especially happy to 
are, are interested in, uh, in periodic reporting, even though they are not forced to be, but out of interest. So thank you, uh, thank you so much for, for, for your interest and for uh, checking in with, with us today. And I'm sure that your contributions will be extremely valuable to, uh, to the to making sure that the question reflects reality as close as possible. And the idea behind giving um, almost nine months, I believe, for, uh, for the questionnaire is also that the timeline for various ministries, there, there can be changes in management, there can be a variety of things that mean that you, we wanted, we've always wanted to give our state parties as much time as possible to fill the questionnaire without the data being terribly outdated by the time we analyze it. Uh, and so even though we have early submission de deadlines to guide you, uh, whenever is, is best in the timeline of your state party is, is best for us as well. That means that we have good quality uh, answers to the, to the questions. Anyone else who has a question for us? Uh, I was wondering if if uh, if Samisi uh, from Tonga, um, I'm not sure if if your internet is good, but uh, if you could just share your experience because you have done so well in in progress in terms of of the reporting. So I was wondering if you could share a few, you know, personal um, personal account for, from your experience with with the reporting. I'm not sure if Samisi can hear, hear us from Tonga. It's also possible that the microphone is muted uh, by default, so. Uh, if, if not, uh, they, they can always write in chat. Uh, where we have also posted the uh, all of the tra past training videos that we've had so far uh, for for the region, uh, a very good resource uh, to to see all of the presentations we have done uh, on all of various subjects uh, pertaining to the questionnaire. Uh, definitely a useful uh, <laughs> link to, to have, but uh, below this you can uh, write uh, whatever is needed. Well, in in case as uh, Samisi cannot hear us, or maybe is ah, he doesn't have a microphone. So maybe I can pass the question to to Ashley. Ashley, I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but I know that you have also been involved in this uh, process. Um, so maybe you can give us a little bit of a of a um, you know introduction from from uh, FSM's point of view. Um, I'm a little bit new to the process. I've actually just been studying the documents and the videos that have been online, so I don't don't really have a whole lot to add at the moment. Um, in terms of, we've started to fill it out, and it it seems pretty straightforward as of right now. Um, but we're working together to to complete that um, uh, the. The reporting but it's the it's not quite the reporting it's the one that you get to practice on so anyway at the moment i don't have any anything to really add i i know that you're working together with gus on this and i know gus was part of of a previous uh, reporting cycle and he told me that it took a, approximately well longer than a month uh, to to complete uh, um in at the current state like have you divided work with gus in some way because i know uh, you're not currently in FSM, um, so do you have any like suggestions on how how to plan work uh, in preparation for the reporting? Um, at this moment, basically what we're doing is um, we're meeting on Zoom and we're going through the questions together. Um, some of the questions I know how to answer and some of the questions he knows how to answer. Um, if not all of them, um, it's just that it does take a lot of time to fill out. And so we're trying to combine our efforts to to fill that document out. Great, thank you. That sounds good. Um, perhaps somebody else from maybe uh, Palau or RMI. I mean, we have from RMI, we have a site manager. So maybe, uh, Eugenia, you would like to 
to give your point of view on on maybe what seems as challenging or how far you have gotten or how you are planning to tackle this exercise? Thank you. Um, uh, uh, just uh, as FSM said, this is uh, this is all new to me. This is my uh, very first time uh, doing such a uh, questionnaire, and uh, I just started reading through the questionnaires uh, last week, and I haven't really gotten to uh, uh, started. Um, to answer the questions, but um, just a question. Um, maybe uh, something I should have uh, I should figure out here. But uh, who is our um, national focal point from the Marshall Islands, and have you been in contact with this person? Thank you. Yes, I. Hello, uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, the The answer is the focal point for Marshall Islands is uh, listed as uh, Mayor Anderson Jibas, um, who has been uh, semi responsive to emails in the sense that we know that uh, he has been receiving them. Um, uh, and I believe that you, you have also been in copy to uh, the percentage completion emails if I'm uh, not mistaken, correct? Yes, yes, I have been. Thank okay, you. great. Uh, so, so in this sense, uh, he uh, is still the national focal point for Marshall Islands. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right thank you. Um, uh, as I understand, the uh, our national focal point have always been uh, with. Uh, our uh, Ministry of um, Internal and Cultural Affairs here in the Marshall Islands. Um, when when did he change to the mayor? Because um, we both work at um, uh, the KB local government, and he is my uh, superior. So, um, I, I, can you tell me when did uh, it change from? Uh, the national government to the KB local government, because uh, th through the years it has always been with the with our national government. Thank you. Uh, a quick point on, on this: there's a there's a distinction to be made between uh, the na the national focal points for periodic reporting on the one hand, and for UNESCO matters and the World Heritage Convention on the other. They can be the same person in many cases. They are, but they do not, in fact, have to be. Um, each country we wrote to the uh, delegations uh, to UNESCO uh, of each state party and uh, the national commissions and the each country designated uh, a national focal point and site managers for uh, each section of the questionnaire so that's we we did not make any decision this this is information that came from the state party um but so there is there can be a difference between who's uh, the in the in the chain of responsibility for relations with uh, unesco with international organizations and uh, who is the national focal point for the exercise, um, which is, a, is an, a point that occasionally causes, causes a bit of headache here and there. So just wanted to, to make that clear. And, and I believe, Anatole, that this is exactly the case for the Marshall Islands. So, for example, Eunia, for the Marshall Islands, um, my usual focal point is Wallace Peter. Uh, mm -hmm. That is at the Ministry of Culture and Internal Affairs, as you've mentioned. But in the case mm -hmm. for for the World Heritage Convention, it's Major Jibas. Uh, so in this case, we have two different focal points. This is completely different in other countries. FSM, for example, it's the same person. Um, that is both the focal point for culture, uh, focal point for World Heritage, and the site manager at the moment. OK, thank you. Thank you so much for the clarification. That's all from me. Thank you.
Yes, so there was a, a quick question on access, on questions of access in the chat, um, just uh, because this is another uh, another point. But national focal points and site managers all get access and access codes for the questionnaire. There can be only one site manager, and they can there can be a, a grand maximum of two national focal points designated for each country. There can be two if one is for culture uh, and one is for nature. Um, all of the coordination that needs to happen at the national level essentially needs to happen offline. We, uh, for a variety of uh, practical and, and responsibility reasons, we have limited access to only the designated national focal points and site managers. Uh, and so, if there, if there are, which we strongly encourage, uh, coordination questions at, at the national level, they need to happen essentially offline, which is why we also circulate the, the Word versions and the PDF versions of the questionnaire to facilitate the exchanges. Do we have I, any other questions? I. We, I don't think we have any other questions yet that haven't been answered. I, I would like to take a moment and ask if everyone uh, uh, who is designated site manager or national focal point uh, currently have access to uh, the questionnaire. Uh, uh, you, Eugenia, you, I, I believe that you also you have access to the questionnaire. Uh, yes, online. Yes, sir. yes, I do. Yes, okay. I do. Excellent. Um, uh, good. So, so if if there are any concerns with with access, uh, please be sure to uh, send emails to uh, WH Periodic Reporting, which I will repost in the chat uh, for everyone to see. I logged in and cannot find the questionnaire online. Uh, okay. So. Um, uh, the questionnaire uh, is located at the following web address. I will put it in the, the chat momentarily. Um, uh, if, if you are properly logged in and have all of the correct access, uh, you should be able to log in at the following web address here, uh, uh, which will give you access to uh, your questionnaire. Now, I, I will also check momentarily whether the permissions on your end are all set. Uh, 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 ah, I believe we have uh, uh, we have a little bit of information. Uh, so, uh, Ellen, if you'd like to take the the latest uh, comment in the chat, that would be great. Thank you. As as I work on the background for other things. Yes, uh, so the question comes from Sumisi. Uh, Sumisi unfortunately has a, a microphone issue, but uh, he has uh, typed in a question. Um, the questionnaire is quite clear uh, since I have joined two online meetings so far on this periodic uh, reporting. Uh, plus I went through most of the available resources, but the past month I was mostly away from office on other islands. So yes, I mean, I know the Samisi has been uh, quite busy uh, the last month. So um, I think what he's saying is that the the questionnaire is clear. Uh, so far he has not uh, encountered any challenges in, in responding. Um, so now it's it's more uh, a matter of of dedicating the time to to completing the report. I believe also uh, the solution of the Facebook group uh, that uh, Valentino has made available, and um, we will find a way of of adding everyone to this group. Either it is through the email that Michelle mentioned, or I can just add you uh, because <coughs> Valentino has um, helped me in in being able to do that. Um, uh, I think the, the, this group will also be a very good opportunity for all of you involved in in the implementation of the World Heritage Convention because it's also a professional network. Uh, you will see and you will have the opportunity to share your experience uh, with other people, both in the Pacific and the Asia region, but also further uh, also with the, in the Arab and Africa region. Um, and it's also an opportunity to to pose questions regarding uh, the reporting. Um, and I, I think this will be a very useful tool, specifically in the Pacific where Facebook usage is quite uh, common. 
So over to you, Michelle. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I I think the, the the if we if we can get everyone connected, I think that that is the the best uh, thing for everyone. So uh, I I think all all we can do is support and and uh, do as much as we can to get you all connected and uh, talking. Uh, we have a question. Uh, can MESC uh, have its own access login to the questionnaire online if possible? Uh, this is. Uh, in, in many senses, an internal matter. So, uh, if if there can be a consensus uh, uh, with uh, within the the Samoan government on uh, who is going to be replacing uh, Bismarck Crowley, uh, that will essentially that another person will be able to get access at, after his departure. Um, so, so I, I think we leave we leave this up up to to uh, your your government organizations to decide uh, when there has been a decision. Please make sure to email uh, WH periodic reporting uh, with uh, a new updated national focal point. Um, uh, great, uh, we can see another person who has logged in and located the questionnaire. Uh, uh, step one is is the most important. Uh, so so thank you very much uh, for for checking that. Uh, are are there any other questions, comments, uh, concerns, stories even on on reporting on world heritage? I think the stories will come later on when <laughs> when the work begins, but it would be a very interesting, I, I believe very interesting to also document how uh, there is a peer to peer um, support uh, within the Pacific and maybe even globally uh, for those uh, completing the reporting. Um, so um, I think well, let's see how, how this goes, but I'm I'm looking forward, and of course we will, uh, as the API office, we will continue supporting uh, all of those uh, countries uh, involved in the reporting. Uh, and I know also from your side in in Paris, you will be continuing to extend uh, your support and assistance. Thank you Absolutely. very much. And, and we, um, if inspiration strikes after this meeting has ended, you always have. Uh, the uh, aforementioned WH periodic reporting email address where we can be uh, reached. Uh, at any point, we aim to answer everything that comes in within a day or two. Uh, so should you uh, should you not have a response from us within a couple of days, don't hesitate to resend or send us a gentle reminder. Sometimes things get get lost uh, in in the various. Uh, filters uh, that the organization has. So never hesitate to ask and, and ask again if you have a question. Um, I'm very happy overall that people seem to uh, have uh, no challenges accessing the questionnaire and finding uh, find the questions uh, easy and straightforward. This is not always the feedback we've gotten on it, so that makes me very happy to hear. Um, and uh, yes, as we said, never hesitate to, to get in touch either with us or uh, with Ellen, uh, who, whom you I'm sure have very regular contact with on all matters related to, uh, to UNESCO uh, culture. Um, very well, just we have one more question in the chat. Let me just read. Right. Yes. One of the one of the trickiest questions in the, in the the questionnaire over the years. This is one of my my colleague Valentin Edouard's favorite questions ever. Concerns the percentage of expenditure, which is a question that is, uh, I believe, both in section one and section two of the questionnaire, but particularly the one in section one, which uh, asks the percentage of uh, state expenditure for World Heritage. And on an annual basis as a percentage rate. Uh, while it would be wonderful if it were 20, 30, 40 percent, uh, in fact, uh, it, because this is the, the total budget of the, your state, it is much more likely to be a very small percentage in the uh, zero comma something region. Um, and But this has been rather misleading. So as a prevention method, uh, indeed, it is a, it's a great way, uh, and I, I fully support uh, Samis's efforts to, uh, to double check uh, this and other information uh, at the national level to make sure that it is within uh, within a, a, 
the, the framework of the, of the question. Uh, it's from other regions, I believe that we have learned that this is one of the questions where we got back the most to our states, parties and respondents to say, um, perhaps not 90% of your of your GDP go to uh, to World Heritage. Uh, so you, you may want to have another look at this question. So that's great. Uh, and uh, for small questions like these, this is this is also why it's good to have, uh, take the time to fill out the questionnaire over an extended period of time, so that you have uh, the opportunity to pick up the phone, write the email, set up a meeting, and and discuss this with the various people involved. If we don't have any other questions, uh, I think I can hand over to Fang for some closing remarks. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Anadol. And then I think uh, really uh, it's a good exchange. Uh, we we can sort of uh, touch the base uh, on the actual situation on the ground by checking this. So a few words. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, participation in today's uh, I call our attention session. A special word of thanks to our colleagues uh, from UNESCO IPI office, uh, Ellen and the Melody, and also the colleagues from the World Heritage Center who are still around uh, at 2.30 in the morning. And of course, the uh, advisor bodies uh, of the World Heritage Committee for sharing their knowledge with us. Uh, in the coming weeks and the months, we will continue our special uh, specific training sessions on the contents of the questionnaire and invitations will be shared with you ahead of time. Uh, the next session of tomorrow, 17th of December, will be dedicated to reporting for natural heritage with the participation from colleagues of IUCN and also uh, colleagues from our Category 2 Center on World Natural Heritage Management and Training for Asia and the Pacific region based in Daradon, India. You also have further opportunities to ask questions, uh, either during the special session on the topic covered by the exercise, or during the question answer sessions held prior to early submission deadline, and of course through the Teams platform and the Facebook group. So thank you all again for your active participation in this exercise. And I hope that uh, we can meet someday soon in person to discuss the one of the key outcomes of this exercise, namely the action plan for the Pacific. Uh, last but not least, I would sincerely hope that uh, the two remaining uh, countries in the Pacific namely Tuvalu and Nauru, could ratify the 1972 World Heritage Convention and join the next periodical reporting exercise. This will surely ensure the universality of the World Heritage Convention. So uh, during this difficult time, please take care and uh, stay safe. All my best wishes. Thank you. And bye bye. Yeah. Thank you very much, Thank Feng. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank bye you. Bye. And good night. I feel like I owe you all a drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now we can enjoy a nice sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you again. Have Alain a good rest. Thank Melody. you so much. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye.